So Crossover 24 has just released and this is a brand new, very exciting update to Crossover, which is basically a way of running Windows games on the Apple Silicon Mac. And the biggest change to Crossover 24 is under the hood as we have a big update to a new version of Wine, Wine 9.0, which brings over 7,000 changes that offer improvements to a variety of games and applications. Crossover 24 also includes updates to other bundled packages, including Wine Mono 8.1.0, VKD3D 1.10, and Molten VK 1.2.5. These are all updates which are going to allow games to run as well as possible on the Apple Silicon Mac. And Crossover 24 also contains some long requested user interface changes. For example, under Crossover Preferences, under System Integration, we can now change the bottle folder. So this is the location where your bottle is actually installed. You can now put this on an external drive if you wanted to, or any folder on your computer. Similarly, we have the Programs folder here, which is basically where the shortcuts live. We can now change the location of this whenever you want. Also, we now have the ability to drag and drop exe files into Crossover. So if I grab this Windows EXE file, for example, Horizon Zero Dawn, I can drag and drop this onto the crossover window. And then this is going to help me run this. I don't have to use the user interface to find it again in Finder. And speaking of which, if you wanted to add the Metal HUD, which is the frame rate counter, which I use in a lot of my videos, you can now go into Run, Command, or Drag and Drop and go to Environmental Variables here. You can press this plus button, and then you can add this toggle option for the Metal Performance HUD. And then when you run the game, the Metal HUD will appear on the top right hand side of the screen. If you want to disable it, just press Function Shift F. F9 to toggle that option. And now what I'm going to do is show you the full install tutorial for the new version of Crossover 24. There's also a pretty big limited time sale as well, where you can get up to 65% off your renewal price. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you all of the new game compatibility. We're going to be running games like Warframe, Mafia Definitive Edition, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Anno 1800, and show you all of the new game compatibility as well. So make sure to watch until the end to see what the Mac is now capable of. So the first thing that we are going to do is download Crossover 24. So make sure to scroll down and then click on the link at the top of the description. Every single purchase that's made through this link helps to support this channel and the content that I create. So click on the link at the top of the description here and you'll be taken to the Code Weavers website. And from today until the 2nd of March 2024, if you use the coupon code WINE9, then you're going to get a whopping 24% discount. Not only is this going to work on Crossover Plus, if you go into your account settings here, go to support licenses, and as long as you have a current license, for example, you purchased one just now, you can go in and log in and click the Renew Now button, and you can renew your license for 50% off, plus a special deal here with Wine9. So it's actually possible to renew your license for multiple years into the future if you wanted to take advantage of this limited time discount. However, if you're watching this video in the future and this deal code has expired, then you can still use the Apple Gaming Wiki new discount code in order to get a pretty big 20% off discount. But if you're not quite ready to commit to a full purchase of Crossover, then make sure to go back to the home page and then scroll down and you can make use of a fully featured 14 day free trial here. Just press the try now button and then scroll down and then enter your name and email address. And I'm going to press the download trial now button to make use of this trial. So once you have made a purchase, then go and log into your Codeweavers account and then go to the downloads button here and then make sure to download the latest version of Crossover. So once that's finished downloading, we're going to go to our finder button here and then go to downloads. And then we have our Crossover 24.0 0 zip, which is the latest at the time of recording, double click, and then it's going to go ahead and extract into downloads. We're going to drag and drop this into our applications folder here. So just drag and drop. And then within our applications folder, we're going to find crossover and then double click. And it's saying here, crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Press open. So now that crossover is open, we're going to go ahead and install the most popular Windows game launcher, which is Steam. So I'm going to press this install button on the bottom left, and I'm going to type in the word Steam, and we're going to click on the Steam button here. And this is basically a Steam installer wizard. We're going to press the install button in here and it's going to go ahead and automate all of the processes that we need for Steam to install, including building what's called a bottle and then downloading any dependencies that it needs. So here it's saying creating Steam bottle, installing fonts. Here, if anything pops up, just press yes. And a lot of this just happens in the background. So now we have the Windows Steam installer opened up here. We're going to go through the Windows installation process. Just press yes to English. We're going to install it within the default location within the bottle and then press next. And what I normally advise people to do is not to click run Steam. I'm going to press the finish button here so that the entire bottle can finish creating. So this means that this bottle entry has now been listed here. So at this stage, I would advise changing some settings. It depends on the game that you're going to be running as well. So D3D Metal, for example, which comes from Apple's Game Porting Toolkit, allows you to run DirectX 11 and 12 games on the Mac. If you want to turn this on, most games are going to benefit from this. Or alternatively, we have DXVK, which is the older method for running DirectX 11 games. Some games work better through this, for example, Overwatch 2. So you might want to toggle this on instead. So you can only toggle one or the other. And if you have neither of these 
turned on and you're trying to run a DirectX 11 or 12 game, then that's going to run through Wine D3D. Also as well, we have the option of eSync or M-Sync. I will turn on M-Sync, which is compatible for most games, and it's going to increase performance as well. So just click on the reboot bottle and enable M-Sync. So we're basically ready to open up Steam. So just double click on the Steam icon here, and it's saying here it's downloading an update. So that's the Windows version of Steam updating itself. So now the Steam login window has opened up. So if you don't have a Steam account already, you can go ahead and create one for free here, or you can log in or use your smartphone to scan this QR code. So I'm going to be scanning with my phone here, and it's going to go ahead and log in for us. And now we've basically logged into the Windows version of Steam instead of the Mac version. And let's say I want to go ahead and download one of the Windows games in my library. For example, one of the new games which is now working on the Apple Silicon Mac is Mafia Definitive Edition. We just need to go ahead, press the install button. We're going to install it in its default location or anywhere else. And once it's fully installed, we can go ahead and press the play button and then launch it using Crossover using D3D Metal and M-Sync, which we toggled on earlier. So just press the play button and then this game is going to launch. So it is cool to see that games like Mafia Definitive Edition are now playable. Whether you're playing through cutscenes or you're going through the gameplay, this is a pretty smooth experience. So I'm quite happy that Crossover 24 now enables compatibility for this game. Also, we now have a new update which allows Horizon Zero Dawn to work at normal speed on the Mac. So previously, if you tried to run this through crossover, then you'd have issues with a kind of slowdown. The frame rate would be okay, but the in-game logic would be in slow motion. However, Crossover 24 now allows this game to work through D3D Metal. No registry tweaks are required in order to get this game to work on the Apple Silicon Mac. Next up, we're looking at Anno 1800. So this is the city building management economy game based on colonial times. And this is being played through Ubisoft Connect, which is Ubisoft's launcher. And Crossover 24 has all of the fixes necessary to get Ubisoft Connect working and also games like Anno 1800 as well. So next we're looking at the free to play online shooter game Warframe. So this is an online action game and this can be installed through Steam, but we're now using the standalone installer. So this is all working at 1080p with FSR set to 2.2 quality mode. So here we're now playing the strategy management game known as Planet Zoo. So a lot of people have been asking me about this game. They want to play it on their Apple Silicon Max. And yes, this is a DirectX 11 title and it seems to work pretty well on Crossover 24. Four. Crossover 24 also contains fixes for the Windows version of Borderlands 3. So you might think, what is the point of running this? Because you can actually play the macOS version. However, the Mac version is restricted to the Epic Game Store, whereas the Windows version can be run on Steam. And although it's a little bit more stuttery on the Windows side, it actually performs better in terms of frame rate than the Mac version. Also, I tested out a few games which had issues in the past. For example, Devil May Cry 5 running here at 1440p high on my M3 Max chip. And also I've managed to live stream some pretty recent releases, for example, this is the Action RPG Last Epoch, which released on the 21st of February. And this is a DirectX 11 game that seems to work pretty well on Crossover 24. Often these big multiplayer online games have onerous technical limitations. However, this is a DirectX 11 game. I hardly experience any kind of hiccups. Occasionally it would do a loading stutter, but overall a very smooth experience. Similarly looking at the game Deep Rock Galactic Survivors, which is a vampire survivors like survival game based in the Deep Rock Galactic universe. Managed to to run very well on Apple Silicon Mac. Virtually no stutters once again, even though there are thousands of enemies on screen at once. Overall, very close to a native life experience, even with controller support, and even though this is still an early access title. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Crossover 24 video. If you have any games that you want me to test out, then please make a request in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.